Hello, third graders. This is Mrs. Graham, and this is Grade 3 Reading, Week 2, Lesson 4, Researchers Develop Their Own Ideas and Ask Questions. The materials you're going to need are your social studies booklet, a pencil, and your assignment paper asking questions. Remember when we read the absent author in our mystery unit back in December? We thought about the clues in the story, and then we asked some questions to think about the character traits, motivations, and struggles. Questions like, I wonder why Mr. Linkletter, the hotel manager, was so nervous every time Dink, Josh, and Ruth Rose asked him about the missing author, Wally Wallace. Or when the hotel maid said, no one slept in Wally Wallace's hotel room, we said, that makes me think maybe Wally Wallace really was kidnapped. Well, when readers research a nonfiction topic, they also need to pause and think about what they've read and develop their own ideas and questions. So our target today is I want to teach you that readers think about the information on a topic and develop their own ideas and ask questions to learn more. Third graders, you can do this. First, you can reread the facts and related bits of information you've read on a topic. Second, you can think about an interesting part and push yourself to think what was important. Next, Think of questions you still have and hope to answer as you read more about the topic. This is how researchers develop their own ideas about a nonfiction topic. Watch me as I show you how readers do this. In our social studies notebook on page whaling, it says, we will use the talking and thinking in response to our text. We'll use the talking and thinking in response to our text chart to help us develop our own ideas about whaling. On the whaling page, it says all Northwest coastal men fished, but whale hunting was done only by the Nootka and Makah village chiefs. The village chief was the only one who could afford the crew and the large seaworthy canoes. Hunters were hired and trained by the chief. This was a dangerous job. Natives respected the whale and believed human effort alone was not enough to subdue one. Therefore, the whole whale hunt from beginning to end had to follow rigid rules. If anything was done wrong, the hunt was destined to be difficult or unsuccessful. Now I'm going to look at the talking and thinking in response to our text chart and think of an interesting part. So I'm thinking of an interesting part, and it's the part where the chief says he hired and trained the hunters, and the hunt had to follow rigid rules. Now I'm going to use one of the sentence frames from the chart to help me think about this information and develop my own ideas. Let's see. This makes me think. The chief may want to select men who are strong, who can throw a harpoon accurately, and will be willing to follow his directions. Also, it says the hunt must follow rigid rules. This reminds me of the chief must trust his hunters and know they will follow his directions and do the job that he tells them to do. Let's see in our next paragraph, it says, whales were never killed quickly. Harpoons that were thrown had floats of inflated fish bladders attached to them to slow the whale's movement and keep it from sinking. A whale weighing up to 40 tons might tow the canoe around for three or four days before tiring. Once the whale was exhausted, the men slashed the tendons of its tail and drove a lance into its heart. 
the dead whale was towed to shore. I think the interesting thing is that it could take three or four days to tire a whale out before it died. The weird thing about this is the men would be out in the ocean for several nights without knowing how far they were from their village. I used to think that when Native Americans hunted for whales, most of the men in the village went out in their canoes and circled the whale and then would harpoon it and kill it. Now I'm realizing it's only a select group of well-trained hunters that were willing to risk their lives to go out into the ocean for several days and join the chief on a whaling expedition. Let's look at our target again. It says, today I want to teach you readers think about the information on a topic and develop their own ideas and ask questions to learn more. So now I need to think of a question I still have about whaling. So third graders, the questions I'm thinking about are, what kinds of whales did they hunt? I wonder if we could tell what type of whales were hunted by looking at the tools that were made from whale bones. Uh, also, I know that whales migrate, but I'm thinking it's in groups. So my question is, how could they hunt just one whale? Why wouldn't the other whales try to attack the canoe and turn them over in the ocean? Readers, do you see how I thought about interesting parts, then pushed myself to think what was important and how I used the talking and thinking in response to our text chart to help me develop my own ideas and questions? Now is your chance to read the pages on social structure and potlatch and develop your own ideas. Start by thinking of interesting parts on those pages and push yourself to think, what was important? What questions do I have? How has my thinking changed? So third graders, here's your assignment. Read the pages in your social studies booklet called Social Structure and Potlatch. Then think about what you learned and form your own ideas of what it would be like to live as a Northwest Coast native long ago. Use the talking and thinking in response to our text chart to help you respond to the information you just read. Write two questions that you would have if you were doing more research on potlatches. Do your questions make you feel interested and excited to learn more about potlatches? Take a picture of your page with your questions and send it to your teacher. Thanks for doing this writing. I'm excited to see what you have to share.